is the second part of 9.3 and now we're going to get into the p-series theorem so we have the p-series theorem is basically defined as n to a power p where that p um, depending on what it is okay if it's greater than one then the series will converge but if the power is a fraction between zero and or equal to one then the series will diverge okay so example three says use the p-series theorem to determine the convergence or divergence now notice they give it to me in the form of a list not in its series version okay so in order for me to figure out what p is i need to put it into this summation notation so we know it's going to infinity by the dot 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 and I'm going to start off with n equal to 1 because this is n equal to 1. Now I notice for all of these fractions, my numerator is 1. For all of the bottom fractions, I notice that this can be written as 1 over 1. And the fractions are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. So basically just n itself. n is 1, n is 2, n is 3, so on and so forth. And in that case, then the p-value equals 1. And we know that if the p-value equals 1, then the series diverges. And we're done with this particular problem. This one, however, might be a little bit more complicated, of course, right? So if we go over here and we start off with n equal to one, again, I notice every single one of these has a one numerator. Um, but notice that for n equal to one, we get one. For n equal to 2, we get this, and for n equal to 3, we get this, okay? And then according to the dot, 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 it should be going to infinity. So what is happening with each of these values? Now, if I apply any power to 1, of course I'm going to get 1. But let's take a look at these. What are happening to these? Well, how do you get 4 from a 2? That would have to be 2 squared, right? And then the square root of 2. And similarly for this, I would have to have 3 squared and then the square root of 3. So if I rewrite this as n squared and then the square root of n, we can put that down here. However, this doesn't help me when trying to identify what p is. So if I put that square root as a power, I get n to the 1 half. And then if I use my multiplication rule, I will add those exponents together, giving me n to the 5 halves. Now I can identify that p is 5 halves. And that is greater than 1, which means that the series converges. So see here, if the p is greater than 1, then the series converges. Basically what it means is that my fractions will keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The values of the fractions will keep getting smaller and smaller because the denominators are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If the values are eventually trailing off to nothing, well then I will end up being able to add everything together and getting a finite number, okay? So this is telling me it converges. Now what it converges to, we don't know. We just know that the series converges, okay?